Today we're going to look at 10 easy ways to use light and shade to convey mood in your story. Today we will look at storytelling with light and shadow, which can also be referred to as light and shade and light and dark, and all this and more are correct. We will be focusing on monochrome so that we are simply looking at values. White light is the combination of all colors in the color spectrum. Black is the absence of color because black reflects no color at all. Value is the quantity of light and dark that reflect without regard to color. Full color adds another dimension to the storytelling and the mood. If we can get the mood right in black and white, then adding color is just like adding ice into the cake. First, let's cover some basics. We have direct light, which is sunlight, moonlight, or artificial light which can be strong or weak. We have reflected light, and this is light which bounces off of any smooth surface. Let's look at the sphere as an example and use this to present all the light and shadow effects visible to the eye. The high light is the plane position to reflect the light directly to the eye. The half light is the plane that sends fewer light rays to the eye. This creates our form shadows with planes that turn away from the light. The reflected light is the light that bounces back to the spear from the object on which it rests or any nearby things. And just as an aside, I use the oil paint dry gouache brush to create the reflected light here. The cast shadow is darker and sharper closer to the spear, then becomes lighter and softer when it's farther away. The light source can be visible in the panel or outside the panel. Values. Here's a value scale I created based on simple percentages of gray. As we look in the color set, there are more than 11 values in the grayscale color palette I created in the color set. This palette is based on different percentage increments, 10, 15, 20, 25, and so on. You can make your own value scale in two ways. First is to create it from scratch. Use the color palette to choose the colors for the start and end of the gradient. The start color will be the primary drawing color. The end color will be the sub drawing color. Next, select the gradient tool and choose foreground to background and drag across your selection. Here's the second method using the gradient tool. First, create a selection again. Next, select the gradient tool and choose Manga Gradient. Drag across your selection. Now, this gradient goes to transparent, so use a white background if you want to create a value scale from this gradient. We will only be using black, white, and three values for this demonstration. Light mid-tone and dark. Light, mid-tone, and dark. Because of mood, we will sometimes use these values differently than we will call them in our sphere example. Light sources. Three kinds of light sources. One, the light source is visible in the panel, such as a candle or ceiling light. Two light sources are outside the panel, such as the moon, sun, street lamp, etc. And I use the fast hairbrush on the wolf. Three, bounce light around in the shade. There are no dramatic contrasts. The light is very even. Light positions. The most common directions that people are used to seeing light are from the top. left, and right. The bottom is not something we see often and is unsettling to us. That's why it works so well in horror movies. For mirror lighting is a combination. It is like coming through a window from an external source, which is soft and works great against a dark background. Observation. How do you start to see light and shadow so it will be helpful to you and your drawing of comics or manga? 
You can make yourself observe what is going on around you every day. Carry a sketchbook and draw what you see. Use your phone to capture or record it. Don't just look. Start to see what is going on around you in nature with the lights and the shadows. You can also archive frames from paintings and movies into your computer. There are lots of paintings, films, commercials, and music videos for you to analyze. What do I mean by analyze? How intense or soft is the light? How do the shadows fall? Are they a framing device? Are they defining the form? While analyzing paintings, movies, commercials, and music, music videos, these are some of your questions you will be asking yourself while you analyze the light and the shadow. 10 ways to use light and shadow. Okay, now we're gonna break down some scenes and see how we set the mood. First, we're gonna look at trapped. A light and shadow for setting mood and storytelling go hand in hand with your panel's composition and camera angles. Here we have two characters talking. Nothing exciting or dramatic here. There are some guidelines here to orientate you to this perspective. Let's get rid of those. Add a midtone and an angle. Okay, this scene is getting better. She's framed by the shadow. Does this mean she has bad intentions? The mystery is created in the reader's mind. But what about the other character in the scene? Now let's add some stairs as a foreground element and place it in dark shadow. The story becomes clearer, even without the dialogue to nail it down. The dark stair railing seems to trap the character by framing him. Is he feeling trapped by her accusations or questions? We create a compelling mood without any expressions from the character. Of course we want the characters to feel alive, so don't neglect expressions. The scene could still use more drama. Let's add some cast shadows to frame the figures. And now we have the characters' faces nicely framed by their shadows, and we've raised the scene's dramatic impact. Now, let's look at another two characters set up and how changes in the light and shadow make different moods. Two, uncertainty. Having only her eyes exposed and him in shadow helped to create a sense of fear and uncertainty in the scene. Three, Suspense. Bottom lighting creates suspense as the reader knows something about the man in the back that she doesn't know. He's dangerous. Four, evil. This top down light on the man makes him look evil, or at least angry. Five, mysterious. Or maybe she does know something. Her face is in shadow, so we don't know what she thinks about the situation. Six, dangerous. Instead of the shadow blocking out details, we see her face. Maybe it's the guy who's in trouble here. 7. Contemplative. Vermeer lighting is soft during the day and gives a mysterious, dramatic effect at night. 8. Crazy or conflicted. Here we have a woman with a gun and we can see she has bad intentions. Now with some bottom lighting, you can see if she is crazy and enjoying it. Here, we can't see her emotions. If she's conflicted, angry, or sad about what she's doing. You use lighting to decide which sets the mood better. Keeping the reader wondering or feeding them information. Nine, threatening. Don't be afraid to let your figures become lost in the shadows. Some cartoonists seem to avoid merging shadows and want everything to be separate from the background. Which looks more mysterious or threatening? The panel with the white outline? Or the one without? 10. Dominate. Dominate doesn't necessarily mean that it's something's big. You can direct the reader's eye to the character you want to dominate the scene. You want the reader's eye to go to the dominant character in your panel. With only the line art, the man may dominate because he's taller, and you see him first if you read from left to right. However, you can change who dominates and directs the reader's eye with light and shadow. Now add shadow from the light source outside the panel to the left. The woman now dominates because her face is angled toward the reader, and she has better lighting. It could be argued that the man is scarier now. 
Now let's add a secondary light outside the panel right. Seeing the man's eyes looking at her reinforces to the reader that we should be looking at the female. Whether the reader is from Western or Eastern culture, they will look at the woman first. Keep this trick in mind to guide the reader's eye by giving a better angle and better light into the dominant character in your scene. And here's a tip. You can use 3D models in Clip Paint Studio to try different lighting setups. Now before we end, I have a bonus round for you. Edges. You can control edges to affect the values also. Edges can be hard or soft. A hard edge defines the values of sharp contrast. Use this to focus the attention of the reader on essential storytelling points. You can have soft edges that blend together. The reader's eye will move past the soft edges until it reaches hard border. Here I use the blur tool. Now I use the chalk tool to soften the edges. You can create the illusion of a soft edge by decreasing the value contrast between the two tones. The edges of each of them are the same, yet they seem to soften as the middle value gets darker. Well, that's all for today. If you've learned something today that has value to you, please like, share, and comment. I'd like to hear from you. And subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And remember, just create.